Hello and welcome back to another video. Today you find me in Islip, New York, and I'm going to be catching a Long Island Railroad commuter train to Montauk. So as I wait for my train, let's take a look around the station. Islip Station has a station building, but it is closed to passengers. Instead, each platform has one of these shelters. In my opinion, they are in a terrible state and are just overall dirty and seem like an unpleasant place to wait for your train. Aside from that, Islip Station also has two side platforms, two tracks, ample parking, and a number of departure screens on the platforms. Not the best commuter station out there, but it could be a lot worse. My train today is the 1029 bound for Spiong, although I will be getting off in Patchogue and transferring onto another train bound for Montauk from there. My train today is hauled by a EMD DM30AC. The coaches on today's trip are the C3 bi-level coaches. Anyways, let's get on board. Seating on board is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration, and I will be sitting on the upper level today. The next station is Great River. With us just departing, I think it's time we take a look at our route for today. My trip today is comprised of two trains. The first train will take me from Islip to Patchogue. The next train will take me from Patchogue to Montauk. The combined journey time of these two journeys is 2 hours and 36 minutes. After about 20 minutes, my train pulls in to Patchogue. As I have a 24 minute layover in Patchog, I think it's time we explore the station a bit. In stark contrast to Islip, Patchog station has a lot more to offer. Although this waiting room isn't the biggest, it still has quite a lot to offer. In the middle of the waiting room, there is a bench that has seating on both sides. There is info screens displaying MTA ticket deals, and another info screen displaying next train departures. Train to Montauk will arrive in seven minutes. There are more seats available towards the front of the train. After exploring Patchogue Station for a bit, I think it's time to head back to the platforms and await my train to Montauk. And, just like that, here comes my train that's going to take me to Montauk. As you can clearly see, this train is identical to the last train. Seating is identical to the last train that I just took. Once again, I am sitting on the upper level on this portion of the journey.
With us just departing Patchog, I think it's time we take a look at our seat. First off, the legroom. Legroom, in my opinion, is perfectly acceptable, although it can get a little tight for some taller passengers. The indent in the seat does help alleviate this problem a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is that these seats do not recline. Moving on, we have a coat hook and a luggage rack above the seat. One thing to keep in mind is that these luggage racks on the C3 bi-level coaches are insanely small. One of the smallest I've seen on a American commuter train. Lastly, I found these seats to be really comfortable. They were really plush and provided a really good amount of padding. Along with that, the seats are ergonomically shaped and have a little headrest at the top, which increases comfort. Overall, not bad. Good job, Long Island Railroad. Sadly, this is where the trip started to go downhill. I moved to one of the only solo seats on the train, and it just so happened that there was a group of people partying on the lower level. Sadly, things don't get much better from here. As you can see, we are stopped in Spionk Station. However, we ended up being here for another 20 minutes, with our train refusing to move. But, by this point the doors were closed, which means we were essentially locked inside the train. The train even lost power at times, but the whole time, the party downstairs raged on, which all culminated in a pretty unpleasant experience. Time to check out this train. At the end of the carriage, there is an accessible seating area. This area features lots of space with fold down seats and is also an area where you can store your bikes. Moving on, here are the seats. The seats are laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration and consist mostly of airline style seats. Now, one thing that's pretty bad about the C3 bi-level coaches are the lack of power outlets. And if you do find one, well you gotta pray that they work because all of them in the car never worked on this whole journey. Which, as it is currently 2022, is not exactly optimal. As you can see, we are now at the end of the carriage. It says here you are not allowed to move between cars while the train is in motion. This seems to be pretty prevalent on New York's commuter trains. Time to check out the lavatories. This particular lavatory was quite a mixed bag. The lavatory is big, spacious, and it's well lit. However, the cleanliness is hit or miss, and the bathroom wasn't exactly well stocked.
station is. As you can hear from the background noise, the train had quieted down. This was because a couple minutes earlier, an MTA staff member came into the car and told the party goers to quiet down, as they were causing quite a commotion for the fellow commuters on board. To my relief, the party goers listened, and the rest of the trip was pretty quiet. As this trip comes to a close, what did I think about the Long Island Railroad? The noisy stations, the delays, and the noisy party goers on board all in all culminated in a not so good experience. This does not help that I take Metro North a lot, and none of this has ever happened to me on Metro North. So coming into this video, I had pretty high expectations for Long Island Railroad. But let's focus on the positives, not the negatives. So what was good about this trip? Well, the scenery was pretty average. I was expecting to see more ocean, but the rural scenery was pretty cool as well. Another thing was the ease of booking. I really think MTA's eTix app is pretty good. It allows you to book tickets fast, and it's pretty clear on how you book them, and I have never really had any trouble using eTix. So lastly, would I take Long Island Railroad again? Yes. Even though this might have been a bad experience, I'm still giving Long Island Railroad another shot. Coincidentally, a couple days after I filmed this video, I managed to hop on board an M9 from Woodside all the way to Flushing Main Street, and I had a pretty good experience. This just goes to show that this bad experience was a one-time thing, and Long Island Railroad isn't that bad. Still, I feel the party goers should be a bit more mindful of the other commuters before starting a dance party on the train.